why I don't understand the issue of the Able Women UN. As a conscientious woman, long-time member of the Unification Church, and relatively young member of the United Nations family, I feel morally obliged to answer to the recent speech given in Korea only a week after my own departure from that exact, exact same place. My retreat at Chongpyong Lake in South Korea was the fascinating study for me of East-West relations. After volunteering to become spokesperson for a group of women who came to Korea from all over the world, especially to participate in the 21-day workshop, I was confronted with different perspectives and expectations and indeed with my own limitations. I was still on my three-week retreat when I learned of the upcoming rally to be held in Chongpyong just one week after my scheduled departure for the establishment of the Able Women UN. From the perspective of unification theology, Korea is the chosen nation where the Messiah must come in our time, and thus, providentially speaking, it is necessary to establish the Able Women UN in Korea, quoting from the speech. Practically speaking, I see many issues from the perspective of a Westerner and also as an international civil servant. It seems to me that Able Women UN does not grasp the true meaning of what the United Nations UN does. Suggesting that women, non-government organizations, NGOs, dominate the male-dominated UN seems to me to be such a contradiction in terms. It reflects to me a very shallow understanding of how the United Nations works. The UN is an arrangement of member states which agreed by convention to adhere to certain principles. The terminology United Nations refers to a massive family of organizations more or less linked together, but actually each independent of the others. I believe that NGOs can do some good work by lobbying and grassroots groundwork in member states and even, as the Women's Federation does, at the UN itself but I do not see that NGOs can take over the guiding role of the United Nations itself, whether composed of men or women. A committee on non-governmental organizations within the UN system essentially governs the admittance of an organization to the status of an NGO. So to say that the Able Women UN should rule over the United Nations is to me simply a contradiction in terms, already due to the circular relationship of the accreditation of NGOs through the UN itself. Quote, Today the UN has developed into the only organization in the world with the purpose of maintaining world peace. The UN has failed to prevent many wars during the past 60 years including the Korean War. The Cold War has ended, but the world still witnesses many wars of varying sizes that arise from the conflict between rich and poor, between different races and between different religions. The UN has failed to fulfill its original mission to maintain world peace according to its original ideal. I could just as well argue God has failed to establish his heavenly kingdom. Reverend Moon has failed to save the world from sin. Religions have failed. The same as some people have accusingly asked, why didn't the IAEA stop Fukushima from happening? Why doesn't the UN stop the killing in Syria? Quote, the UN has not been able to advance beyond the level of balancing the various interests of each nation. That is why we urge today that the new system of women's peace movement centering on NGOs, non-governmental organizations, must replace the current male-centered system of GOs, governmental organizations, in order to overcome its limitation and to finally usher in the settlement of world peace. Since such a women's peace movement can only be realized through the global cooperation which goes beyond the level of NGO, the establishment of Able Women UN 
is necessary. This does not explain or address the new UN Women, which was founded January 1st, 2011. The statement, quote, We must wage the movement to realise the true love of living for the sake of others in every part of society so that we may realise world peace. It's typical to me of statements we often hear from our founders in Korea and other Eastern members and leaders. For myself, as an Australian, and considering myself as a Westerner, I believe this type of language is problematic, not only to me as a Westerner, but also as an international civil servant. Quote, the contribution by speakers representing UN organisations of their expertise in a number of relevant fields combined with the active participation of a number of UN ambassadors, councillors and international NGO representatives led me to feel that such meetings have the potential to offer real solutions to the healing of our world if the conclusions reached can be acted upon. Unquote. This quotation rings true in my heart, as since the beginnings of my own NGO activities in Vienna, representing the Women's Federation at the United Nations, I felt exactly the same way. If the conclusions reached can be acted upon, the issue is still, as always has been, to act upon the resolutions moved, to adhere to the treaties, to get signatories to the agreement, to ratify the treaty, to state that, quote, however, Women's Federation now must advance even further. It must go beyond the next step to walk the path of the creation of a peaceful world through joining forces together with other NGOs and women leaders of the world. The establishment of the Able Women UN, which will go beyond the level of women NGOs and bring governments around the world together, is absolutely necessary. And it is also the command of God which must be obeyed. Even the newly established UN Women has a way to go. Quote, I make a solemn declaration for the establishment of Able Women UN, which will help all women around the world to realise this historical mission and expand the scope of women's movements to the entire world. To proclaim, quote, Beloved women peace leaders, in today's world, where must humanity go? The problems that humanity faces today can only be resolved through the ideals of true love centering on God and the ideal of one family under God, which Reverend Moon and I, as true parents, have been teaching all our lives from the moment we received the teaching from heaven. For this ideal alone is the only path that will lead humanity to the world of everlasting peace and happiness. At the UN, which was founded beyond religion or denomination, it seems inappropriate to me to use this type of language, even though I am a dedicated member of this religious movement as an international civil servant, I am obliged to act impartially, representing only the community of nations and not my own nation of origin. I'm obliged to act in the interests of all humankind and not of one particular interest group. To proclaim that, humanity must now humbly obey the command of heaven may all be very well at the church pulpit and in a dedicated rally for the inauguration of a special interest group. At the United Nations, it is inappropriate to use the language of religion and...